Greeting, Traveler. your mind. my assistance. Traveler.
Good evening, everybody. It's Wednesday. You know what that means. Yes, we get to start making hump day jokes. And yes, you are that much closer to the weekend. But more importantly, Wednesday is the day of Tavern Talk, the show where we like to make hot takes and bad takes alike, sometimes simultaneously, depending on the mood that we're in. I am, of course, one of your co-hosts, J.R. Jugger Law, and tonight we've got a fantastic show for you. It is what we call the Playoff Picture Time. We are in the last week of the regular season, and we're going to be talking about a lot of matches, but we're also going to be taking some time to discuss our predictions for who's going to make playoffs in each series. But before we can get to that, I, of course, have to talk about my co-host for tonight. My, the, first off, we have the man, the myth, the guy who is the master of OPs, the man who is not part doctor, but as I always say, he's most certainly part fish. Say hello to Dr. Fish. Oh, hello, everybody. How's it going? Um, yeah, we have a really good show for you guys tonight. Um, and, yes. we, and we do have a nice special guest to welcome in. You know, I was going to make a joke about Geranium being here and be like, you're not Geranium, but I guess I'm not doing that. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Don't worry. Sorry. <laughs> no, we do have a very special guest, though, today. Uh, instead of our lovely fellow Geranium, we have a, uh, a, we have a very special guest who is a veteran of THL, who has been around probably about as long as I've been in THL, possibly a little bit longer. He's the captain of one of the longest-running uh, Legacy Series teams in THL. Please say hello to Cop. Hey, guys. How's it going? Super excited to be here. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. Bear with me, because it's my first Tavern Talk, but um, yeah. I thought it's your second. No, it's my first. I mean, I've done, like, no, oh, oh, right. years ago. I did you were, some, like, right. Um, reigning, right, also reigning champion. Yeah. Yeah, you were on. You were on. Yeah, you were on at the end of last season. Yes, that would be your one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For like a quick interview. Yeah, right? for the interview. Yes. So now, now he's got full cam set up, uh, full co-host set up. He's got the all of the all of the uh, the benefits and all that stuff. So he is ready to properly contribute and show us what we have in store for today. So, um, like I said, we're going to be talking about. Uh, uh, Hero Pro and Legacy series. Uh, we're going to be going over the standings in each conf in each uh, series and talking about where everybody stands and who we think is going to make it in ter in terms of playoffs. Obviously, it's a little bit different for each series, so we'll discuss that as we get to them. So we'll be starting off for now with Hero series, uh, going through the standings there. Now, this one obviously we've talked about this before. Hero is the one going through. Uh, is go is the one with the most interesting uh, set of playoff, uh, you know, uh, setup I should say, because uh, the format for this series is going to be that uh, it's going to be the top three teams from each conference, as we previously discussed, and the last two spots are going to go to the two teams between the remaining eight teams with the highest amount of points. So that means uh, this we could end up getting two more teams from teal, two more conference, two more teams from purple, one from each. It's all going to depend on the the playoff standings, uh, the point standings after uh, after the week is over. Now, of course, we're looking at the standings right now, and as you can see, uh, the teams that are currently at the top are uh, of uh, Purple Conference are Golden Wisps, APM Yin, and At Diamond, At Diamond. For Teal Conference, we have no pros here, the unknown, and make a five seed out of a mole hole. Uh, the t for both, now, the I would say the top two spots from each T from e uh, sorry, the top spot from each uh, conference is pretty uncontested at this point. Um, no pros here, in theory, could end up uh, having their spot overtaken, but it's definitely going to take a big week from either the unknown or make a five seed out of a mole hole to take that. And then for Purple Conference, uh, they're just, you know, uh, Golden Wisp are just completely out of reach. They are having a perfect season going in, and I won't lie, I fear for the team who has to play them uh, in the very first round. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. So, thirty points ahead. Exactly right. So yeah. they're they're currently thirty one. Uh, sorry, twenty one points 21 ahead points of APM ahead. Yin. But as you can see, the most amount of points that APN can uh, APM Yin can end up with is a one hundred fifty eight. So even if they win the rest of their matches and deny Golden Wisps any points, uh, it's still not going to change a damn thing. So uh, and then, of course, as we saw, we have the teams that are currently right behind uh, the the third place teams, that being APM Yang and F2L Black. While they definitely have some decent points to make up, it's very doable at the moment. So what, what are you guys' thoughts? 
Yeah, especially because APM Yang, like they already have a win in the the, the match column. So if, yes, they do. Uh, yes, it's still pretty Which, tight. It, like right, like the the max number of points left is nineteen. So like the the most they can get is what one twenty nine. Uh, yes, um, exactly. So yeah, that, that basically means like make make a five seed out of Mohill can can only win what what five or six points, seven uh, seven points. For a, for a time. Uh, yeah. Yes. In, yeah. Uh, that would, that's for eight, 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 nine points minimum. But yes, that that's yeah. that's always one of the things that we talk about when it comes to uh, THL in general. Uh, we find that from a mathematical standpoint, teams are often not technically out of contention. Um, but because of how easy it is to get certain like a certain minimum amount of points, mm -hmm. um, trying to overcome a big deficit can be really hard. So 11 points here, for instance, well, is, it can be done. Um, it is made very challenging by the fact that, as Comp just pointed out, uh, make a five seed wouldn't have to get that many points this week to prevent APM Yang from passing them. Yeah, yeah, right. And APM Yang would have to win out, essentially, and, and make a five seed. Exactly, right. Lose out, you know, yeah. Yeah. Right. Fish, what, what, what would you like to add to the conversation here? So... I, I think the top three teams from each... Con I feel like those are kind of the locked... I feel like there's not much that can take those teams out of cont out of uh, playoffs. Even if something like APM Yang having a huge week, make a five seed out of a mole hole, having a struggle week. Um, I still think that... the that um, I still think that the teams that are there at the, uh, are in a very good spot. I mean, I think essentially the top three teams in purple are almost guaranteed playoffs. At diamond, at diamond, not mathematically a locked in, but they'll, you know, they just need a couple of points and they'll, and they're locked into the playoffs. Exactly. Um, right. Really, it just comes down to the th those three teams: F Twelve Black, APM Yang, and Horty on Main. And we have some of these matches on display. I, the only one we're not talking about is F Twelve Black. Spoilers. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so F Twelve Black <laughs> is playing LeBron. Um. Which, in theory, is a very good match. Is you know, LeBron has one win on the season mm -hmm. and a tie. They did tie. Um, no pros here, but I, I mean, they they definitely can play spoiler and try and keep us out of the playoffs. I, mm -hmm. I'm, I think this is. I, I mean, you know, I'm very confident that my team will get the points to make playoffs and and you know we'll, we'll squeak in. It's been right. You know, it's, it hasn't been as, as pretty as last season went for us, but, you know, playoffs is playoffs. You take it. Um, exactly. I, and Horty on main and APM Yang are going to... Uh, good start for APM Yang there, for sure, to get the, to win their first match. Um, right. And we'll, we'll kind of talk about those, those two teams um, in the matches that we've, we've picked. I, I, yes, think, we I, I think... I um, think... Even though APM... I think... Um, APM Yang having the advantage with this first win, it and it's close because that that's they they do have six points advantage right now, but Horty on, but Horty hasn't played any matches, but right. and so I I think I don't know, like my gut tells me Horty on main is gonna make it because they're gonna have a, a huge week, but I don't know, it like I I think the five I would put money on the top three teams in F2O Black. Mm -hmm. uh, not not a lot of money, obviously, because I'm not I'm not a big gambling man. I think I think uh, I think, <laughs> I, think I, I think I think I would I think I would I think I I expect those seven teams, and then it's close for the last for the last spot. Okay, I I I would say I think that's good. I'll say this: I think that um, for me personally, even though I could definitely see Horty on main uh, pulling off an upset, I think this is going to be. The current top four teams from each mm -hmm. conference are going to be the teams in playoffs. That's yeah. going to be my prediction. That's perfectly good. Right. Yeah, I for think me, that's mine too. Yeah, I, I think that's the thing. I, and I think we could all agree on this. Like, really, I think the, realistically the only team that maybe plays spoiler here is Hordy on main, which is possible. But again, you know, we got to kind of see what happens. Like, um, the good news for them is they could definitely take on APM Yang because while they do have, while they are down six points right now, APM Yang does have a match played. So coming into this week, they were only down two points. It was two points, yeah. So a lot can happen. Um, but that, uh, sorry, F2L Black by comparison, like they're probably getting in one way or another um, as long as they don't have like a big loss. The only way they don't make it is if 
uh, somehow APM Yang and Hordy on Main both passed them this week. Yes. Which, possible, I mean, technically, course, te- technically yeah. possible, but the eight-point right. gap between Hordy on Main and F2 Black is a lot to, exactly. um, is a lot to overcome. Are- I, I, th- I will say this. I think if F2O Black gets a decent amount of points or even just wins this week, I think they're locked into yeah, playoffs in some me. form. Yeah, we'll make Just it. a question of the seeds. I think the, where yeah. the seeding comes into play, you know, my prediction is, like, I, if I had to guess, I don't think that APM Yang mm-hmm. or F2O Black are going to, uh, like, get into the top three of their respective conferences. I don't conferences. think so. It's but tough. I, Right, but I do think uh, F2L Black will end up taking the seventh seed, mm-hmm. and APM Yang will end up taking the uh, the eighth seed, which would be a bit rough for them because they'll have to end up playing against uh, Golden Wisps if that's the case. Mm-hmm. But you know, we'll see yeah. what happens. I mean, F2L Black wouldn't have it much easier with NPH, so or actually with actually with APM Yin or NPH. So <laughs> yeah. Because it because seeding in playoffs is just points, so exactly APM Yin and Golden Wisps could just be one and two. No pros here could end up in the three seeds. Just all points based. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see that all play out because yes. matchups um, matchups could end up <laughs> making for a very interesting uh, prediction week when uh, when mm-hmm. next week comes around. Yeah, especially when it comes, especially if you play a team you've already you already have experience against. Um, right. So it's but, gonna be interesting what we get in playoffs. Agreed. Um and I think now is a good time to it segue is. into our first match, which is going to be uh the match I picked. Uh I decided to go with uh what I think is probably the most I guess in my opinion, I think it's the most relevant of the matchups. Um just because both of these teams uh have like so so here's the thing. I think uh the I think all three of these matches have some kind of playoff implication, and I think are relevant. I think we yeah. did a good job of picking the three most significant matches. Uh, this one, though, I'm the most excited by because, like I said, APM Yang is in a position here where they could, in theory, uh, make it into the top three, or at the very least, to just keep themselves in playoff, like in the playoff conversation, in the playoff contention. Um, and no pros here is in an interesting spot because they're obviously looking to make sure that they keep that uh, the top spot, the top seed of the teal conference, mm-hmm. as well as as you know we were saying before, they could end up getting passed by APM Yin if that uh, you know depending on how they perform this week. So yeah. um, it's also worth mentioning, as you'll see on the screen, that NPH is playing with two subs this week. Uh, Rusen Ho is coming in for Agent PWE. And Vampire Nighthawk is coming in for Posca. Yes, for Posca, right? yeah. Okay. Yep. okay. I was going to say, because Posca, I think, is not playing in Legacy, but he is playing in Hero, yeah, or am he, I wrong? Yeah, he's playing Hero. He, he's had, yeah! he, he has had an excellent Hero season in the regular season, going 7-1. and one. Right. So and as it's been big, established, big like we said, him. NPH is making it. NPH is making it. Oh, no, they don't locked. really have anything to lose by subbing in players. No. Um, I don't think this is going to, like, you know, if you have to sub in, you have to sub in. Mm-hmm. This is honestly a great week to need a sub, given their position. Yeah. Um, and then APM Yang not coming in with any subs. And they're starting off with a big win. KSW getting the win. Skittles uh, yeah. on the seed. Uh, KSW definitely needing that win. He was coming into this week with the least amount of wins for APM Yang. Uh, and that's that's very clutch at that point. He is really he you know this is this is a team that's just looking to maximize his points right now. That's a great way to do that. Um, so that leaves us with four matches: Rusen Hill versus Genji in the one, Mom Kid versus Jammies in the two, uh, Vampire Nighthawk versus Nomad Farmer in the four, and Clarity versus Wifair in the five. Uh, I I think this one is going to be uh, pretty exciting. I think No Pros here definitely has the advantage despite the subs, uh, purely based on record. Um, I think your mum kid is and Clarity are going to take wins in the two and the five. Um, and I think Nomad Farmer is going to take a win Vampire Nighthawk in the four. So I think it's really going to come down to Genji versus Ho. And if I'm being honest, uh, I, I got to give the edge to Genji here. Uh, he's having the most success on this team this season. He's a very solid one seed, and having uh, having mm-hmm. seen some of his prep uh, and some of his uh, uh, some of his uh, master tour prep uh, from our shared Discord, uh, it's 
it's very interesting seeing like what a knowledgeable player he is. So I think he's yeah. I think he's got a really good shot here. So I'm gonna say APM Yang is gonna I I think um it, it's gonna be a very close week. Night I think Nighthawk come Vampire Nighthawk coming in in the four is is quite good. He Vampire yeah. Nighthawk typically playing in the two or three in Legacy. Um, but I, it it looks like he's had a bit of a PR decline, or or at least he's played in Hero with a low, with a lower PR to have it be separate. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I think having him come in as a four seat sub is is <laughs> quite good. I I think uh, I give Genji the edge in the one. I mean, excellent player, like first season in THL, and he's. Probably not leaving 550 PR anytime soon at this point. Um, Ked versus Jammies, a very, very great match. I'm, I'm a big fan of Jammies. I'm a big fan of your mum, Ked. I think Ked is on a is having a hotter season, so I think he'll continue it. Get the eight and one record. Uh, Night Vampire Nighthawk versus Nomad Farmer. Um, I think Vampire Nighthawk is a really good sub, and I think he's going to be able to come in and get the win over N Nomad Farmer. In Clarity versus Wifair, um, man, Clarity, I, I'm very pleased to see Clarity having good seasons. Um, even though I guess four and four, you know, he he's 500, so coming back and and being able to kind of hold ground. There's a lot of really good five seeds in Hero now. Uh, right. It's it's just it's that this that's gotten the seed has this that specific seed's gotten better and better every single season. Um. And this is a tough test for Clarity. Why Fair is an excellent player. I think Clarity can pull the upset off, though. I, I think I think MPH gets the three two. It's it's definitely close. They win in uh, matches in points. I don't know about points, but I know in I think that they'll win in matches because it could yeah. with with it could end up pretty close. Um. So we'll see. Yeah, interesting. I'm I think I'm more with Jr. I feel like. APM Yang is going to win, and I actually am maybe going to root for, like, a, a bigger upset and, like, a big week mm -hmm. for APM Yang. Mm -hmm. um, right. You know, I feel like Rosino, like, you know, certainly subbing in, you know, like, at where he's subbing in. He's a really good player. He's good, but Genji is, is also really good, and he's 6-2, yeah. and, two and um, yeah. you, know, like, you know, has the experience in Hero, so I'm going to say Genji wins. Ken versus Jammies, I agree. I like both of them, but I, I'm kind of rooting for the underdog, and I'm kind of rooting for APM Yang to, to put up some points and and um, you know get a, a good seating. So I'm gonna go with Jammies and the two. Um, you know, KSW already won. Nomad Farmer. Um, I agree. Vampire Nighthawk is is freaking awesome, but I don't know. I'm just feeling the underdog story this week. Um, I'm gonna say Nomad Farmer wins, and then I'm gonna say Why Fair beats Clarity. Um, you know, purely like just on and kind of record and and again, go underdog, go APM Yang. Yep. Yep. Awesome. I mean, I will say uh, one of the only, despite the PR difference, um, Clarity is one of the five seats I definitely know better than others, and I think I feel like his PR is always very misleading. Yeah, because so he came would... he came in at such a low. He came in at like the lowest PR you can have. In exactly. THL. and so it takes so long uh especially if you struggle at first it takes so long to uh actually yes rebuild your pr to go above 50 um, I, I would honestly compare so. him and this 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 may sound like a weird comparison but bear with me i would honestly compare him to Saku. um yeah. both of these guys are have, have pretty much always had like very low prs but it's very misleading when you actually consider they've had a deep amount of success throughout their time in thl for sure. Like, they're pretty established veterans of the, uh, of THL, as opposed to some, like, new person coming in with 50 PR who doesn't really have much experience. That's just something that's kind of been yeah. consistent for them over the course of their time in THL. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's kind of what I would say. But I, yeah, I think this one is going to be really exciting, because again, win or, like, the thing is, we could end up with a situation, obviously, where APM Yang wins, and they still kind of end up in the uh, in the eighth seed or playoffs, but like you know they could beat no pros here, and maybe they're maybe they're still the eighth seed, but no pros here is no longer the top, at the top of teal, you know like yeah. that's that's where like a lot of this gets very interesting. So um, I think there's going to be some form of repercussions 
like where one team won't be in the position they're currently in now mm -hmm. um, after it's over. But time will tell. Time indeed will tell. I think we should move on to our next match. I agree. Uh, Fish, you did pick this one, if I'm correct. Oh, no, this is, uh, this is comp's match. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's Hordeon Main versus Korak City, and as we were talking about before, this is kind of the the big a big match for Hordeon Main um, to make the seven or eight seed, and potentially, you know, the the top three in in uh, in Teal for sure. Yes, um, it's a good match, um, and it's looking like um, so. Yeah, like the the one seed we've got Mr. Python four and four versus Run Mexico. Um, that's going to be tough for sure. Heat Shock mm -hmm. is subbing in in the two seed. Um, you know, against Dante. Uh, Dr. Bombed is in the, the three seed against the Big Ted. Uh, Jespine versus Anful. Um, and the three in bite size AC versus Quaz in the, the four. So uh, definitely feels like this is going to be pretty pivotal for Hordy on main and for the playoff picture in general. Well, um, what do yep. you guys think in terms of predictions, guesses? Um, well, I, I would, well, Comp, I would like you to start off with what, are, what do you think your predictions? Uh, what are your predictions? Uh, so I'm like... I know I was like, all in for the underdog last last match, but I think this one is going to be pretty on mains. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to root for like you know as many teams uh, you know competing for the seven and eight seed as possible. Um, so I think it's tough to go against Ron Mexico. Like he's so freaking good, um, mm -hmm. but uh, I think I get. I'm, I'm just going to go all in, right? So I'll say Mr. Python uh, beats Ron Mexico, and the somewhat upset, maybe not. Um, Heat Shock, I think, uh, will be a loss, but maybe the one loss. I'm going to go for a 4-1, so Heat Shock's going to lose to Dande. Um, Dr. Bomb, I think, is going to beat Big Ted. Um, you know, besides the records, like, they're both good players. Um, mm -hmm. Chespin, I think, same with Enfil, and, and Bite Size AC, I think, is, is, uh, is due for another win against Quaz. So I think that's my, my, uh, my guesses. What about you guys? You know, it's it's interesting because this one, um, there's a, there's several factors to consider because uh, uh, Hordy on Main only needs to beat um, uh, APM Yang by two points in order to pass them because, uh, as Bone Master's pointing out in chat, yes, they do have the tiebreaker over them. Um, so... I I think APM Yang is going to take it over, is going to take uh, their match and just barely edge out over Hordy on Main. But there is, crazy enough, a realistic scenario where Hordy on Main, uh, where both of these teams win and Hordy on Main still passes. So, I don't know. I, I think Hordy on Main is going to win this. I, I do think that uh, between Heat Shock, Dr. Bombdy, uh, and Jess Bean, I think they're going to, uh, I think they're going to win. Um, it's just really going to be a question of, do they get enough points to, to pass APM Yang? Um, they're going to really want, like, this is, this is a situation where you, even when you lose, you want to be maximizing those points. You absolutely want to be getting as many points as you can. Um, and I'm very excited to see if, you know, we're going to see like a lot of like close matches. Are we going to see a bunch of sweeps that kind of, Make that less likely. Who knows? Um, yeah, my prediction, hopefully, my, it'd be yeah. great if we go into Sunday not knowing and you know, like going to the last couple matches. I'm not sure when the match times are going to be, but that's always the mm -hmm. best tension. And yeah, anticipation. Um, I, I, yeah, this is just going to be. This is going to come down to the wire. I think uh, my prediction is going to be that Hordeon Main wins, but falls just short. Um, but again, who knows? Uh, we also have to consider the possibility that. Uh, F2L Black doesn't win their match, and they're able to pass them to to make it. There's there are several scenarios uh, where Hordy on Main can definitely make it, uh, but I would say they really want to focus on getting a big win here uh, first and foremost, and then hoping that uh, NPH takes a win over APM Yang. Yeah, um, I think that this is. I mean, this is still a relatively close match. Um, Heat Shock subbing in for ABC. Like, Heat Shock's, you know, he's, he's played so many seasons of Hero at this point. He's. Wait, it's ABC. Don't you mean. Wait. No, no, Heat Shock is subbing in for ABC. I thought, wait. Yeah. Which team was Nails playing on? Nails is on LeBron. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, Nails is on. 
Duh. is yeah is playing my team this week. Um, we've got so uh Python versus Ron. I'm gonna root. I always root for Ron. It's tough again. Python playing another person <laughs> that <laughs> I I that are uh, either an AMG player or just someone I I love to root for. I'm I think Ron's gonna get the win. I think Heshock's gonna get the job done in sub. Being a sub, I, I think uh, Heshock always tends to have a good tends to always kind of be able to figure out metas, um, kind of figure out the game when it's a little bit in flux. So I, I think he'll have some some crafty things up his sleeve. Uh, Bomd versus Ted, I think goes to Bomd. Um, I, I mean Ted is I've seen Ted playing on stream and he's barely, he he's either barely losing, um, or. And he has some nice wins. He got he does have one of his one of the wins for his season on stream. Um so I it'll be a close one. I, I will favor uh the the doc in this one. Uh Jess versus Onfall. Um I mean, Jess is on fire right now. I think uh he's I think Jess is gonna gonna take this one. And then bite sized AC versus Quaz. Um I think Quaz will, I think Quaz will take it down in the five, and that'll be a th uh, a three to two. Uh, so I, I think they'll also, f I think they're gonna fall. S I think they could just fall slight short, slightly short. It's yeah. It, I think Ron versus Python is like the closest, is probably the closest match out of the set. So I could see it going. If it goes Python's way, I could see Horde around Horde on maybe yeah. that push. But uh, I yep. do. I think if it's, th I mean, if I'm predicting three two for both. That means that uh, that means that APM Yang would make the playoffs off of that, unless they're. Yeah, I agree. Um, the yeah, Python versus Ron is is going to be the pivotal match. I feel like. I agree. I think that one is the hardest one to call, um, and I think like I could see Donde getting a potential upset against Heat Shock, but yeah. I, I think Heat Shock might actually have the advantage of not having past lineups for to uh, to look at to kind of guess where. Leaning towards so, Definitely. um, yeah. you know, he also heat shocks, heat shock. I feel like that kind of goes without saying. Yeah. So yeah, I I think he's got a. I think this one's going to be very close. Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely will say I I definitely don't see Hordy on main making playoffs without a win. I think that part. I agree. Um, I, like obviously, if both them and APM Yang lose this week, that is still possible, but. I'm gonna make the prediction and say that's not what happened. So, yeah, this one is like all sorts of complicated to to. I feel like two APM Yang like putting up that first match win or first game win is is pretty yeah. Huge. That that's also yeah that's also a yeah. valid point. Um, like that's one less win that they have to worry about getting this week. Um, so that's and that's and again, you could argue that win is particularly important because it was their player with the least amount of wins coming in, who was arguably the least favored getting a big win yep. over the opponent. So yeah. I'm yeah, very excited to see where all of this how all this is gonna unfold mm -hmm. uh leading into next week. So we got one more hero match we're gonna talk about. Yes indeed. And I have this gone... one is Beach's match. Yeah, I have gone over to the purple conf well it's actually a cross conference match. But yes. uh, I have featured a Purple team. We have at Diamond at Diamond versus the Unknown. Very exciting match this week. Um, we have matchups always just in time versus Bach for Life. Bach for Life is back in THL. Always yes, nice to see his name. Always nice to see his name. We've got Turtle versus Chewy. Wild Nine versus Magnificent. Um, or Magnificent, and we have Diamond versus Thalfix. And Super Buckles versus Jim Philos. Um So Diamond Diamond's team has been doing very well this season. They are they started off kind of slow at first, but they picked it up in the back half of the season. Um I th I think I think this is a very interesting match. I think Bach coming back, he's been doing very well. Uh on ladder, it seems. He's he's been Getting he's pretty high up on ladder and um 
on fault thank you for the prime sub 36 months that is that is three years Ooh. that is a long time thank you so much for your continued support of thl That's and for crazy. your prime subscription um, i've got 32 months and i'm yeah. like i thought that was a lot <laughs> don't forget everyone if you have prime gaming you can sub to the channel for free um that's what i've been doing for years now yeah i i think so going in to the actual matchup <laughs> who i think will win um this is important because it deals with it can deal with seeding within exactly. it can deal with yep. seeding within the playoffs um so justin versus bach for life um definitely yeah he he posted that he was taught he was 14th place recently on ladder so you know he 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 was kind of struggling towards his towards his ladder time in thl before he took a break recent like his last time taking a break um i don't i i think he's definitely like high caliber enough player to go against justin i think the fact that he doesn't again doesn't have any lineups to really look at i think um it's gonna be a lot about um i think it's gonna end up being quite a lot just about how these players uh, view what classes are kind of best to bring for the week. Justin's always um, been on top of things. Um, I, I think I think that's probably my that's the match I'm most interested in total. I'll come back to who I think will win on that. Uh, Turtle versus Chewy, um, I think. Is I think uh, Turtle's just been putting on a clinic this season. He's he doesn't seem to be giving up a lot of points when he's winning, <laughs> and uh, only two losses on the season in total. Uh, Chewy also having a pretty good first season. Big fan of. Uh, I, I I know Chewy's an excellent player. Um, Mech versus Wild Nine. Uh, I think I think Turtle will end up taking that one. Uh, Wild Nine versus Mech. Um. Two two extremely evenly matched players, um, and I th I'll give it to Magnificent here. Uh, Diamond versus Thalfix. Um, dang, six and one versus six and two. I, I don't, but I, I I do not bet against Diamond. Um, so I think Diamond takes not that really, at least. And then Buckles versus Jim Philos. Ah, I want Buckles to get. I, I'm gonna say Buckles gets his first win. He's been playing so he's been getting better and better throughout the season. And I'd love to see him get his first win against Jim Philos. Uh both are excellent players. Jim's having a very good season as well at five and three. And I think I, I think um uh, I mean it's pretty like it's pretty likely Justin wins based just off of the fact he's played more this season, but it's a close match. Um, I think I'd give the nod to Justin if I had if I had to, like, just put that out there. But as Sharma was saying, do not sleep on Bach. Like, he'll come prepared. So I it's gonna be a close he's one. A top hundred legend player. Like, what the hell? Yeah, he's in, he's always he's just always been a good player. Just sometimes struggled during the seasons. So Frickin And what's crazy is I'm guessing based off the fact that his name is Black is that I I don't know is he just is he a perma or is he just subbing for the week to Sharma? Because I, I feel like maybe he's just not in red because I pulled this from from Purple Conference instead of from Teal. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna guess he's he's just yeah he's just a uh, he's just a one week sub. So Desharma will be back for playoffs hmm. or whoever your regular one seed is. Um, I'm trying to remember for for heaven's yeah. sake. I we've covered. Oh, it's Molstar. It's Molstar. Molstar. That's right. It's Mole. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Thank you that for the sense. information. Which is Mr. funny because he's not on Mole Hill. Or Molehill, excuse me. Moles are not on the Mole team. Mm -hmm. he -he. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, th this one this one's gonna be interesting because like you said, uh like I, I feel I think at this point both these teams are basically locked for playoffs. It's just a question of do they what's their seeding going? Like yeah. where do they end up mm -hmm. um ranks? Um, at Diamond, at Diamond, I feel like uh, they're probably pretty secure in the uh, in the three seed, uh, or the sorry, the third spot for Purple Conference. 
they are you know they're 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 a decent amount of points ahead of f12 black but they're a amount of points behind apm yin so it's it's possible for either the difference overcame but it is definitely going to be uh it's definitely going to be tough um so they just really they just want a big win to maximize their chances and to have some momentum going into the first week of playoffs. Um, looking at these matchups, I mean, oh god, it's close for most of these. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna I like a good underdog story. I'm gonna bet Bach beats Justin. Yeah, as ridiculous as that might sound, I'm gonna say Turtle beats Chewy because honestly, as great as Chewy is, Turtle's Turtle. I'm just that's just kind of where i'm at um wild nine is ridiculous right now in the three seed there's he has no business being in the three uh, i'm gonna say he takes it over magnificent um diamond yeah i'm not betting against diamond here um diamond the last couple seasons has just been on fire and pretty much everything he does whether it's captaining playing etc um and then yeah i'll give us i'll give jim Velos the win in the five though so i'm gonna say it's gonna be three to two at diamond mm-hmm. at diamond yeah, I kind of agree. It's hard to bet against that Diamond and Diamond this week, like going through the matchups. Um, although I think it'll probably be a little bit more lopsided. Um, I feel like it's it's hard to bet against just in time. It's hard to bet against pretty much anyone in, at Diamond and Diamond, right? Like, um, Turtle is the same. Wild Nine, I'm kind of biased because he's my one seed and he's freaking amazing. Yeah. Um, but there's no, yeah, I mean, it's hard to bet against him pretty much ever, um, but certainly as a three seed um like you mentioned diamond is having an amazing season i'm kind of like i've i've had seasons where i'm like oh and eight and it's like i'm i'm super rooting for for buckles to yeah to turn things around and pull out the win mm-hmm. right yeah he i mean he's this is just his like he's just picked up the game for a few months now he's you know he's definitely gonna he's definitely learning the game uh pretty well when i faced him it was definitely a close match so I was so I I just I've just been pulling for him every time I see the team to get his first win. <clears throat> All right. So that's going to conclude the Hero Series portion of our show. We're going to move on into Pro Series. I'm going to go ahead and pull the standings up. We've got our two conferences. We have uh some bye week teams that we're looking at. Um and I think pro is in pro is definitely kind of shaping up to be uh, the the playoff picture is looking very clear. Um, yeah. In some regards, like the like when you look at the buy team, so in Black Conference F two L, they're at one hundred and thirty eight. I I don't be- I believe they are mathematically locked uh, for playoffs. So we have three locked teams out of black because everyone's a winner taking the week i believe i i don't no they haven't 100 percent locked no, the they week haven't yet. they haven't, they haven't yet. won the week but they have clinched playoffs through points right um yeah. so apm right, and tagger apm versus taggers right is apm versus taggers i mean this makes it very difficult for apm to not make playoffs because there's a 10 point gap they'd have to get absolutely smacked by a they'd have to get smacked by taggers in every seed to not make playoffs at this point i'm pretty sure um exactly pink conference is a bit closer a lot of it i think will depend on seeding uh a lot i think seeding will be a, a big part of what happens yeah taggers need, yeah absolutely needs to, needs to win <laughs> by 12 which yeah. rarely happens in thl so I exactly. I think that it's, it's yeah, I think cool. the Black Conference is pretty much like kind of figured out. It's might it's just gonna be can your team get enough points to pass everyone's a winner or for the three seed, um, or are you guy or will your team end up being the the four seed for Black Conference for uh, talking to obviously Bone Masher in chat. Um, right. I think Pink Conference is very interesting. Brushy Tuna. I, I have to guess is probably locked for playoffs uh, at this point. Um, they'd have to. Oh, they absolutely are. They absolutely so, are. Yeah. Like, so, not mathematically to... speaking, technically. Yeah. But the thing is, only, uh, only one team ahead has of a realistic seed. chance of passing them. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. So. so, 
it's just gonna come down to and i think swagoy by not getting a lot of points last it looks like they didn't necessarily they didn't get a lot of points last week it looks it looks like um so they're yeah. they're pretty much looking at needing popeyes and no pros here to get uh beat pretty badly but that would allow us a uh, teams below that would allow teams below swagoy to actually pass them right so yeah i i think it's i rough. don't i don't think they make i just think they don't make it now pa- yeah uh for the boys needs one more point and they pass and they're already in are they in over swagoy and then popeyes and no pros here both only need eight points they need two match yeah. essentially the equivalent of two match points to match wins in points exactly. to pass Swagoy. I think Swagoy's out. I think Brushy Tuna for the boys. Popeyes. And I, I do... Yeah. Oh, okay, so they already won the head-to-head, so for the boys is actually already in play. Is already above them, I should say. Technically, with tie breaks. If for the boys gets full swept, they would still... Right. They, and, the other t- and not enough teams pass them, they would win over Swagoy. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, so, so they've technically passed them through tie break, but I think it's just going to come down to Popeyes, no pros here, um, essentially and NPH yeah. for the last teams. And I mean, they're they're pretty. They're, I think they're far enough ahead that those will be the four teams. Uh, make love not Warcraft and EU greater than NA would have to, and or um or Heat Shock team no pros here would have to have some good weeks so that's my I, thing I, I think that playoffs for yeah. pro is kind of it's kind of clear it's just seeding at this point i would agree cop what are your thoughts on this yeah i agree i agree with Sugoi probably being out i mean yeah. almost be like you could you could lose the week and still have you know come up with eight points um the, pretty easily so mm-hmm. the um, thing that is really that. sad that I will mention before, sorry to cut you off, but will mention is that Swagoy unfortunately got pretty, pretty much wrecked uh, by four of the boys last week, 18 to seven. Ah, uh, so that uh, would be what happened. one of their matches. And um, we had kind of talked about this last week, but if they got a decent amount of points, uh, they could have, they could have easily just been in like a good spot because right now they're basically at a point of, um, you know, they need a team to do really badly yes. versus uh, yep. whereas if they had done better last week, other teams would have needed to meet like a higher threshold to pass them. But uh, comp, yeah, continue. Yeah, yeah, no, it's one of those things too where like every point of every game in every series like matters, right? Like mm-hmm. because at the end right. of the season you look up and you're like, you know, potentially a couple yeah. points out. So yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I agree. I think it's it's brush your tune up for the boys, Popeyes and, um, and no pros here. Um, I think make, make love note war like in general, like I think it's hard to make up um that many points from that many teams, right? Because um say like you know Popeyes or No Pros here like does does really poorly, then Sogoy will make it. So, you know, I think it's right. you're, you're looking at four to those top five, um, for sure. And then it'll just be really interesting looking at the matchups as we go through them. Yeah, it it's a it's a tough situation because if um, nope, like the problem right now, as Fish pointed out, is that you know the teams that pop that uh that Swagoy wants to have really weeks are playing against teams where if they get enough points, they could potentially pass them anyway. So it doesn't look good no matter what. Like the only scenario in which they um in which uh they win in which they make it is if like Popeye's chicken sandwich or no pros here have like a very low scoring week. But then the uh, but then the team that beats them doesn't have a huge win for that week either. So it's hard to imagine a scenario like that being possible, uh, let alone it actually happening. So I hate to see it because I was really rooting for Swagoy and I was really applauding them for having like you know they had they had a good run. I think it's very impressive that despite um, their struggles in getting match wins, they were getting a lot of points. So, I would love to see an upset here, but I, it just does not seem likely. Uh, but then for Black Conference, I do think is a is interesting as well. If you know, even in a different way, because uh, yeah, F two L is 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 locked. Uh, Clowns Reloaded is pretty much locked. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, they're pretty much they're pretty. Much, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, they're locked. They're very likely. They're very likely to just lock the one. They'll very likely yeah, exactly. just lock the one seed this week. Like, yeah, they haven't played a single match, and this team um, hasn't a- lost yet. So right, or they they, they've lost there. once. My apologies, they did lose. They lost. To, they lost to APM. Yes. So I I I am I am I am I am not I am I am mistaken in my words there six and one but they're right. they're, they're probably gonna lock the uh they'll probably lock up the one seed here um yeah, it it, it would be very shocking for them to not get eight points this week oh absolutely absolutely like even if they somehow lose I think they're still going overtake F two L um and everyone's yeah, a winner yeah, obviously I think they need like one or two more points to just lock it up uh mm-hmm. lock up the spot so um and then i i think apm is going to hold on to their spot as well um i think that they like yes taggers if they get a big win over them could in theory theory pass them but i just don't think that um i don't think it's going to be a big enough win for yeah. taggers to overcome that deficit if i'm being uh if i'm being if i'm giving my own personal mm-hmm. Cause, yeah because like, you could see even that won. like that you know they played one match taggers won but apm still picked up two points right exactly like, mm-hmm. really hard. like you really have to sweep i mean spoilers that's gonna be one of the matches we talk about but yes yes yep. so i guess that's kind of where we're at we all kind of seem to be on the same page there are obviously again possibilities of some upsets happening and there is a, a lot of the seating for them very much up in the air um but nonetheless uh we got several matches we're going to talk about so uh, let's start with the first of the pro matches now, um, which is the match I picked, and I decided to go with the matchup that, on the surface, doesn't necessarily doesn't necessarily seem like the most relevant. Uh, but I thought it would be good to talk about it anyway, just because um, it is two of arguably the best teams uh, in pro right now going up against each other, and this could end up having big implications for uh, the overall seeding. So, uh, this is, yeah, Brushy Tuna versus For the Boys. Uh, we got Ron Mexico's team versus Diamond's team. Uh, and I am here for all of this. Uh, both these teams are having really strong seasons. Uh, Brushy Tuna currently undefeated and looking to continue that undefeated streak going into, uh, going into uh, the playoffs. Uh, and for the boys, uh, literally just need like one point to, or no, no, I think they're pretty, we said they're basically locked. Well, due, due to tiebreakers, even if they got full swept. Right, so they're, if they have right, them so versus Swagoy for the fourth spot, then they would get it. Right. Because of, because so, of tiebreaker. Exactly. So I think the only team that would stop them is like, if somehow Make Love Not Warcraft passes them. If you, if, yeah, if, if multiple, if a third, te- if that was to happen and then other teams, yeah. Dab right. says five points is guaranteed, yeah. and I think that's going to happen, sure. honestly. Yeah, exactly. Five points is guaranteed, right? Yeah, so I think that's good. Point, You're good. Exactly. Yeah, like, there are so, mathematical scenarios, but, like, yeah. as Tone Master said for Sir Boy. They're, yes, they're so diff- really it's so difficult for very rare. Yeah. for it to that to actually happen. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, I, obviously, just looking at this match in general, we've got some big powerhouse matches coming on. Um, we've got ourselves... Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Five points gets them ahead of EUNA. That's mm-hmm. wait, hold on. Yeah, well, hold EUNA twenty three point. Like they would have more points than T- EU greater than an A could actually get, which is why they're locked. But yeah. hold on. In theory, can't Popeyes? No, no, no but th- they can't. They're, they're they'll still very oh, likely oh, make oh, playoffs. Oh, right, right, right. Because they're playing against each other, so they can't all pass them. That's yes. right. Yeah. Okay. Some people are sorry, playing each other. Sorry for that. I forgot about that. Yep, we were yeah. literally just talking about that. Thank you, for, but thank you, thank you for, thank you, Dabs. So, yeah. Oh in other words, like, in other words, and then I'm like, right, because it's like in a mathematical situation, there's no way all those teams could actually pass. Right. So yeah, five points and four of the boys are locked. Uh, matchups wise, we got McBannerface versus Super Chicken, Ron Mexico versus Dabs, Lotus Knight versus German Chef, Ridiculous Hat versus Jack Weiss, and Based Inc versus Dar Dar Binks. Um, is there a match here that I'm not excited for? Answer is no. There is not. Um, so, man, I guess it's a question of, do we think For the Boys gives Brushy Tuna their first loss, or do we think Brushy Tuna is going to continue to be all Brushy Tuna and keep winning? Because I'm going to say Brushy Tuna gets that 8-0. I'm going to say Bannerface, uh, hmm, Dabs, Lotus Knight, 
and Arhat take wins over for the boys. Uh, with sorry, yeah, I think sorry with a big banner face, Lotus Knight, Arhat taking, and then Dabs and Darda Binks taking wins for the boys. So I'm going to say Brushy Tuna wins in a close three two, but still getting that eight zero uh, regular season finish that I'm sure they're wanting. Right. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I mean, it's hard to pick against like pretty much anyone on Brushy Tuna, especially with the momentum of going seven zero. Right. Um, so I, exactly. I kind of uh, agree with you. Like, how do you pick? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think make better pace for Super Chicken. Maybe that'll be close. But I'm gonna give the the nod to Ron Lotus Knight ridiculous hat in a four. You know, basic. Um, I think it'll be four one Brushy Tuna. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's definitely one of those matchups where, um, what I think what surprised me the most personally is that Brushy Tuna is, is obviously doing very well. It's not like they haven't. It's not like they they have like a bunch of undefeated players that are keeping them undefeated. Um, you know, most of the players have at least two to three losses, and they've still managed to always get those wins when they need them. So I think that's a testament to uh, how clutch they their wins have been uh, throughout the season. Fish, what, what what would you like to add? So we have, I mean, these are all excellent matches, obviously. Um, banter versus versus chicken. Um, I I rooted against chicken last week to of to to try and put a caster curse on Glee. Um, Why though? Because diamond no diamond asked in the chat last week. Oh right 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 right, right. right. yes right. I I I really wanted chicken to win, even though it, and that match was excellent and. As we see, Chicken now does have a one in his, in his uh record, but I, uh, it's another close one. I I think I'm gonna lean Banter though, over Chicken, and that's, and, and that's being a, a big fan of both players. Dabs versus Ron, man, I, oh, why why does why does the THL matchups give me Ron versus player I I really really like. <laughs> Because that's the story of THL. Yeah, I mean, it really is. Um, yeah, especially pro. I'm pick, yeah. but uh, I got a roof. I got to say, my boy Bobby Dabs gonna take it home. He, Bobby Dabs. Dab, Dabs in the two. Shep versus Lotus. Dabs um, in solitude. I think uh, Shep gonna keep it rolling in the three. I think it's gonna. I think Dabs will take it. Or, yeah, Dabs. Shep. A uh, hat versus Jack Weiss. Jack Weiss uh, definitely looks like got a win last week gonna have a tough one against hat but i think i think jack weiss in the four i think it i think for the boys does hand brushy tuna their first loss and i think um and i think base takes it in the five no i actually w i actually would have ended up on dabs regardless uh i know that dabs has been playing excellent hearthstone lately so I do. Yeah. I do think for the boys, yeah. hands them the hands brushy to their first loss. It'll be a close week though, for sure. I think so um, too. So. I think so too. I I always feel like teams that are um that do so well with um you know kind of they, they don't have a crazy point total of say like Golden Wisp from from um Hero. Yeah. You know, like that means that like they they kind of um you know everyone pulls their punches and pull, yeah. pulls their weight and you know like everyone like it's a, a team win. Mm -hmm. So it's always hard to beat against those teams, you know, like to argue against those teams, honestly. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Um, All right. Um, yeah, so we can jump to the last pro match, which is... We have two um, more pro match matches. I picked. Yeah, we have two um, more. So that's the oh, first one. Um, comps match is next. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the next one, right. So, um, yeah, as we were talking about, eventually, like, APM versus Taggers... Um, you know, for sure, it's a, a question about, you know, whether or not Taggers can come from behind, come back. You know, they are, um, you know, they picked up the first match with Battle Tagger beating ABC. Um, I do think kind of um, just just looking at that match already kind of shows you why APM is just favored for the, the playoffs is that, you know, they pulled out two points. And that alone, you know, means that exactly. Tigers has to do that much more this 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 week. Um so I, I still feel like FNG, like APM is going to be favored for playoffs pretty much no matter what. Even though I think by and large, looking at the the matchups, I'd, I'd go for APM uh, to pull out the win. Um, you know, despite the first first game loss for for 
uh, ABC. Um, I think Reverb is going to beat Seth. Um, you know, despite you know, like the great season that Seth's had. Um, I think same with Sabretooth. Um, Magnificent, I think, is going to eat. You know, squeeze out otters and chewy against lasagna as well. Um, but I, I still think no matter what, I think APM has such a lead on Tigers that, that they'll they'll pull out the the playoff uh, mm-hmm. seed for sure. What about you guys? Um, I definitely agree with your main points. Um, I think that I feel like APM is just going to really try to get as many as they can, um, mm-hmm. and I think they're in a pretty spot obviously taggers it would see them get a big upset um but i i want to see my boys on apm uh really take it to playoffs um and i think with the matchups that are coming up um see the problem i think that uh ends up that you end up noticing is when you see like the difference in records and you see like apm having quite a bit of momentum on their side um i think especially when it comes to five seats i feel like they're gonna have a bit of an edge so I think um, I do think uh, Reverb is going to take it in the two. Sabretooth is going to take it. Um, I do think that Otters is going to take it in the four, but I also think uh, Chewy is going to take it in the five. So I think APM is going to take it two. Um, I feel bad rooting against my boy Rice Bowl, but I think APM is just they got the edge here. I think even if Sabretooth doesn't win, I think maybe Magnificent will. I just think they're gonna they're either gonna get the win or they're going to accumulate enough points to keep themselves ahead of uh taggers. So yeah, I think uh I, I that's how I expect it to play out. Yeah. Um yeah, I also feel like Bone Masher is in the chat, so like they, they just have to win, right? <laughs> no, Bone Masher, you can't go oh five to miss playoffs two seasons in a row. I agree. I I think um I think it's gonna be a close week. Taggers getting that first win is pretty key. Um Reaver versus Seth is a really good match. I think Reaver will take it. Uh Saber versus Rice Bowl. I think uh Rice Bowl will take it over Sabretooth. Um and and I think uh then I think Mech and Chewy will take wins for APM and it'll end up being a three to two win, so I I think uh, I think that's gonna lock them into playoffs. Seems good. Seems mm-hmm. good. So essentially, dabs all that APM needs is more points than taggers to make playoffs. So they're they're already well ahead. Yeah, no more than 11, less than Taggers. So technically, they could lose and lose by a few points and still just make it. Well, right, because it's yeah. obviously 12-point difference. Yeah. So that type of point difference is going to really, I think, realistically, they're going to have to win by, uh, like, they're going to have to win three out of the, four out of the five matches overall. And even then, that doesn't guarantee it, depending on how many of those wins are three twos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. They'd have to not give up what six more points, which is hard. Roughly. Um, I mean, yeah, they would have to if they if they won if Taggers won every match, then APM wouldn't make playoffs. But that's very unlikely. I think that's just not going to happen. It's possible, but yeah, it just it's it's, it's unlikely, but it's possible. I I think that I think APM is just going to make it. They've they've been doing well all season, um, so. Gonna fin- I think they finished the season strong. Yeah. All right, so we've got one more match to talk one about. More. Yes, one more match in pro. We have uh, Popeye's Spicy Chicken Sandwich versus No Pros here. I'm going to quickly check if there's a result in the Justin match because there, there are bans, so I, I will just quickly check in case there's results. Yes, Justin took a three to one victory over Valdis. So Popeyes is currently up four to one, which is good for which it looks good for them. Um, so I will only predict the we'll we'll just go through the last four: a uh, Lambie series versus Heat Shock, Honest Zabe versus Ufric, 
Iannodon versus Obviously, and Mr. Beluga versus C Mac. Um very close matches record wise. Um Popeyes is now only like essentially one win away from passing I believe they're one match win away from passing um uh Swagoy in points. So I and I think they'll get that for sure. Um I'm I'm curious to see uh I'm curious. I I'm curious to see some, especially like a matchup like um, Lampy versus Heat Shock. Um, Swagoy gets Swagoy doesn't get any points. Wait, do they get plus three? No, no, no. that's just how it's displayed. Oh yeah, on the standings. No, they don't. Uh, when you have a buy, you get zero points. Yeah, so you don't get any are, points. Right, they are they are done for the season. 113 points is what everybody has to beat. Yeah. Um, so they're, and, you know, Popeye's yeah. sitting at 110 right now, so. Exactly. So, so it looks good for them. Yeah. I think, um, Lamby versus Heat Shock. Um, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like Heat Shock's just going to have something up his sleeve, but I still feel like on paper, Lamby should win. But, um, I think I'm going to pick Heat Shock. Uh, Zabe versus Ufric. Um, I'm gonna pick. Hmm. I think I'm gonna pick Zabe here. Myanodon versus Avi. I'm gonna go for Avi. Um, and that's still a close match, regardless. Um, and then Mr. Beluga versus C Mac. I think I'm gonna go with Mr. Beluga. There's some mind games here with Lambie submitting two lineups on Thursday. One for MT before... Oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah, that could happen. Uh, with having to submit um, for Masters Tour before submitting for THL. Um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. I have this favoring Popeyes with a 3-2. With a um... So, what say you guys? Hmm. I yeah. was, I mean, you know what, Comp, you go first. I'm still kind of thinking about uh, this. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a good, like, set of matchups for sure. I think um, you're right, Fish, that Popeyes probably makes, well, you know, will, will overtake Sogoy no matter what. Because even, you know, yeah, just one win will will do it, but just any combination of three three points, yeah, will do it. Um, which is you know pretty hard for them not to, um, you know, especially with um, with Justin winning, um, and I think in general, like they're it's going to be close for sure. But I think you know Popeyes will eke it out. Um, I think I'll actually go with um, Heat Shock over Lambie series. I think. Uh, Zaib's gonna be Ufric. Um, uh, Zaib on a Zaib. Zaib. Um, I made that for a while too. Avi. Um, that's hard. Like a lot of these pro matchups, man. Like it's it's just like it's yep. tough because they're all good players. Yep. Um, but I'll, I'll give the edge to Myanodon and Beluga over C Mac. I think is is what I'll say. So I think Popeyes will win decisively, and it won't be close. Playoffs wise. Yeah. What about you, Jer? Ah, this is hard. I mean, I mean, 12 points, as we've discussed, is a hard deficit to overcome. So I feel like Popeyes probably does win this one and makes the playoffs. But it's also like, uh, it's, it's, it feels very close. It feels closer than I would expect. Um, because like, like you said, Lambie versus Heat Shock. Um, I think that could easily go Heat Shock's way, despite Lambie's incredible talent. Um, I feel very confident Zabe's going to take it over Ufric. Um, Myanodon versus Avi, I feel like, is going to go the way of Avi. Um, and I think c is going to take Beluga. So really, I think it's going to come down to Heat Shock versus Lambie. And, you know, I, I, definitely, I definitely support the... Um, the pick of Heat Shock, but I'm going to say Lambi Sears takes it and Popeyes takes this one three to two.
All right. Yeah, this is going to be a super close match. Um, but yeah, let's get going to it quick. A uh, quick break, quick commercial break for uh to give some information to our viewers and then we'll be moving over back into our legacy series matches to close uh for our Feast. final series. Um Feast, may I? Yeah, you can do it. All right, cool. <clears throat> I'm not going to be able to do as fast as uh Geranium, and I'm not going to do a rap breakdown on this, so just a heads oh, up. Oh, good. Thank you so much for tuning into Tavern Talk. If you are enjoying our show, please make sure to or you check out Around the Saloon and the Maniacal Tournament series on uh, on Mondays, and Ro -ro -ro Ronnie Tuesday on Heart Center on Sunday that you'll never guess. Perhaps you're looking for the Missing Fourth series, a look into the wild, wild west with Wild and Out. Are you still asking, where's my content? Well, we stream THL matches each night from Thursday to Sunday, starting at 8 or 9 p.m. Eastern. All evening match schedules are to be determined by caster and player availability. Side effects may include knowledge and fun. But wait, that's not all. We also have incredible matches on weekend afternoons on Schoolstone. Precise times and days are subject to availability. Speaking of which, please subscribe. Please consider subscribing to our Twitch channel. This subscription enables the THL team to help cover the various costs of operating our website and improve the quality of our streams and content to our viewers. And I see someone asking in our chat. Oh, yes, I do see it. I do see it. What is Twitch Prime? Uh... Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, what is uh, what is Twitch Prime? Well, if you have Amazon Prime or Prime Ga uh, slash Prime Gaming, you can sub to the channel for free. Uh, so hit that heart button and keep the notifications on to make sure you catch our team streams live. We appreciate each and every one of you. Special note to our viewers, check out THL's other social media points of interest. Our website at TeamHearthLeague.com, our Twitter at, at THL underscore HS, our Discord Team Hearth League, and the THL POW podcast, wherever podcasts are sold. POW. POW, 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 POW. <laughs> Now, of course, we've got one more series we're going to be talking about, and that is, of course, the biggest series of them all, the series with 24 damn teams. I'm, of course, talking about La La Legacy. Ooh. B -b 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 Bobby yeah. Dabs with that six months damn. with Twitch Prime. Thank you wait, so wait. much. Dabs, did you dab upon, uh, did sure. you dab after you subscribed? Because I need to know. Because you bet, I hope you dabbed. Otherwise, it's less significant. Um, <laughs> so he did. Thank you, Dad. Much appreciated. Uh, so, as we've talked about uh, in the past, uh, Legacy is pretty straight. Just like with Pro, uh, Legacy's playoff si situation is pretty straightforward, with one exception. Uh, that, of course, being that unlike in Pro series, not only do we have seeding that matters, but there's also going to be a uh, there's also going to be a buy round for both the the teams that finish first in their conference, as well as all the teams that, as well as the team that has the uh, highest amount of points uh, among the teams that do not finish at the top of their conference. And as we've seen from the standings now, well, there's a lot that could happen. Uh, so at the moment right now, uh, we've got, of course, our three conferences, gold, silver, and red. Gold conference is pretty, I, I would say it's pretty set in terms of who's going to make it uh, to the top. Uh, Red Conference, it's a bit more contentious. And Silver has it the closest, where there are actually four teams that could realistically walk away with that top spot. So, we have a bunch of talk about. I'll, I'll try to make this quick, since I know we're already running to the hour and uh, nearly 20 minute mark, but I'll start with uh, Red Conference first. Uh, Red Conference is definitely in a very interesting spot. I would right now, uh, Just Win and F2L White are both locked into playoffs, but very much fighting for that top spot in the conference. Um, MU, uh, MU, OH, Hearthstone, Dad Legend, Chaos Theory, and Everyone's a Winner, and I2L. Well, yeah, all five of them. They could all realistically make it. It would be hard for, uh, for Everyone's a Winner and I2L to pass Dad Legend because that's like a 10 to 12 point gap. But it is still possible. Um, the team that I'm really looking out for right now is Chaos Theory. Oh, sorry, uh, not 10 to 12 points. Excuse me, uh, eight, uh, six to eight points. Uh, six to eight point difference. I forgot Dad Legend does have a win already. Mm -hmm. um, the team I'm, I would say watch out for is Chaos Theory. Um, they're having a pretty solid season. 
Uh, they are somehow tied with Dad Legend despite having two more wins than them. And they are uh, definitely in a good spot to, I think, take the playoffs. Now, we will be talking about one of the matches in this conference. And I think that uh, once we talk about that, you'll understand why I think top four spots are going to be Just Win, F2L White, uh, MUOH Hearthstone, Chaos Theory in that order. Uh, for Silver Conference, we've got ourselves a very highly contested uh, conference. To me personally, I don't think the top four is going to change right now. Uh, Golden Wisps can technically pass one of the teams above them, but I think it's going to be a tough task given like they have at least 12 points at minimum that they have to uh, overcome uh, over Hot Zilfs. Um, but I don't, necessarily, I don't necessarily feel certain about what the uh, seeding is going to be for Silver. Uh, I actually think that All Points Matter is going to take it, uh, it's going to pass the cooler uh, for the top spot, and it's going to be All Points Matter, the cooler, Hearthstone Academy, Hot Zilfs. So I don't think there's going to be much change, but I also could easily see that, uh, I could see a lot of that not coming true, considering the Zilfs are only two points behind HSA. And of course, HSA is only six points behind All Points Matter. I mean, for all I know, HSA is actually going to take the top spot, and that would be absolutely so. Yeah, I'm excited to see uh, how that unfolds. And then finally, Gold Conference. Uh, I mean, Clownstone Academy is basically locked in the top seat. I am not going to say that they don't make it. And Defias uh, and Pod People are, are sitting pretty comfy in their respective spots. Um, for me, obviously, I think the fight is going to be between IDK and Fish for that fourth spot. Mm -hmm. uh, Golden Showers are technically not out of it, but they have a very tough road to climb. Um, I, think, I think IDK, just like last season, going to sneak in there and we are going to get that final spot in gold and i think it's going to be clownstone pod people defias idk in that order boom what do y'all think um so in <clears throat> so i'll go just in order i'll go gold conference clownstone academy I think I think that um not only will our team um get the buy, I think I think we I think with a strong week um against against our opponent, uh I think our team is going to be the number one seeded team in Legacy. I think we're gonna we're gonna have I think among buy teams it does kinda matter. Because if you have that number one buy spot, you play the lowest seeded team remaining after the, after the first round. Um, Pod people makes it, Defias makes it. I think those teams are very unlikely. Um, yeah, I. I mean, I could say it's going to be just an absolute blowout, but we are. But IDK already has four points against our team, so yeah. I think I, I wonder if we'll be talking about that match, Feast. I, I think um Yeah. Oh, it's so Crazy. tough. Like Fish is playing Defias is the other thing. Exactly. So it's, it's like, yeah. oh god, there's gonna be some intense matches for sure. Definitely. And that's and that's cool because also those but matches I, could end up factoring into uh the overall seating, um, even if like Defias ends up winning. It could, yeah, definitely. You know? I think I think um yeah, I think pod people are gonna I think um pod people have a good chance to sneak up and actually get that fourth spot in the buys. Um but ah between IDK and Fish, that's so tough. Um just for the fact that you're that just for the fact that um I think that our team is going to be well. Pre I think if our team is well prepared, I think we could t keep your team out of playoffs. But I, uh, I'll say your team makes it. I'll say your team gets the, gets enough points. I mean, our matches are going to be close. So I think uh, IDK. I think Fish also can just struggle against Defias. Defias is a super super good team. So, um, I think I think IDK makes it over Fish. <laughs> They get more points than f they they get that that extra they they sit one point ahead <laughs> at the end. It's um, gonna be close. It'll way, be super I... close. Red conference. Um, just win. 
I think uh, the way it looks now, uh, F2L White versus Dad Legends being pretty close, which is good for Dad Legend that they're getting points. Um, but I think um, I think MBOH, Hearthstone, F2L White just win, and um, I, think, I think Dad Legend makes it. I think they get enough points. I think they hold off Chaos Theory. I think Chaos Theory, everyone's a winner. It's too close of a match, and I think Dad Legend gets, takes that final takes that final spot. <laughs> See, it's my bias against close. my bias against yellow dart aside. Yeah, I have to go with chaos theory over uh, over dad purely based on records and momentum. Sure. Yeah. So... And then and then silver conference. I think it's I think the four teams we see are the four teams we're getting the four top four teams. Um, there's a big yeah. enough point gap between golden wisp between the wisps and the zilfs. So exactly. For, it, I don't it, seating order don't. I mean, seating order, eh, it, it's not too big of an issue either way. One of those teams will be a buy team. One of those teams right. will probably, between APM and Cooler, I think um, I think one of them, I think I, I think Gold Conference holds that final buy, buy spot in pod people. So I think whoever doesn't get there will have to play in the first round. But yeah, super close stuff. Uh, we have quite a lot to go over for matches. Let's, so, let's yeah. do it. Yeah, I will say it good. is very interesting how every... Like, what I love to see is that every conference kind of has its own storyline going. Yeah. You know, Gold has, like, two teams really fighting for that last spot. Red Conference has a bunch more fighting for that spot mm -hmm. and more teams that are kind of in jeopardy of, of just falling out of playoff contention at the very last second. Um, and then Silver Conference has, like, four teams that I think, we, like, we agree we all feel pretty confident are going to make it, but the actual seeding order feels very up in the yeah, I mean, ten points separating the first and fourth seed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's and close. Like, yeah, yeah, like, and, and it's like even if that team doesn't that. overcome the ten point gap, they can easily overcome the gap with the other teams ahead of them. So it's yeah. like, all, all right, you know, like a lot yeah. can happen here for sure. And that buy is very sought after. So let's get let's start out right now with the match I picked. Which I mean, Fish and I are co-hosts, and. I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to figure out. I had to go with IDK versus Clownstone Academy. But, but hear me out. I also justify it because even though Clownstone Academy... <laughs> this is an important match. <laughs> like, like, this, like, Clownstone Academy does feel very securely, uh, in a sense, getting that by, I do think. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know they want to, like, hold down their dominance. Um, they want to get that... They want to get a big win because it's also worth... We also should mention... Um, that even if you're only looking to get that by, you know, finishing top of the conference, the overall point totals will still carry over um, it, when it comes to reseeding once we have our top eight teams. Yes. So in an ideal world, you want to have the most amount of points out of any team in the conference. And as we can mm -hmm. see from the current standings, um, the one team that's standing in their way from that is just win. Just win. Yes. So, yeah, this is going to be this is going to be pretty nuts. Um, as we, as you could also see though, from this match, uh, Jess Bean already played Korodin and beat him three to one. Um, this was a gentleman's agreement, by the way, where both players agreed. No, no, they, to be played. no they, uh, that, that was, uh, that would, that was, uh, done away with. They actually played. Oh, it was? Cards. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. That got confusing because Jess they, they, they agreed. Yeah. Happened. They agreed to not do it. And then they, and then, um, I guess. Between them, they decided to actually use the new to actually use new cards. Um, See, so, you didn't make that clear in so many words. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, good win for Jess. So, I mean, I have no idea what I'm doing. So You're, I'm just okay. glad that he managed to 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 take it home. But we still got four big matches happening. Um, we've got, of course. Earl coming in the one for IDK, but instead of playing against the legendary Neji Boston, Neji is uh, is, 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 taking, mm -hmm. is taking a break. Uh, to, I assume it's because he's focusing on the MT, right? Yeah, Neji Neji is subbed out. I believe of every. I don't know if he's subbed out of every single series, but he's not right. playing Legacy or Hero. He's he's uh in the he's playing the Masters Tour, and this, obviously this weekend. So right, and obviously for this match especially, like there's not really much. It's Take, he could definitely afford yes. to. Uh, he could definitely afford to take that sub. Mm -hmm. um, and he's and of course you guys got Lotus Knight to come in, so that's that's a pretty 
Oh yeah, he's also he's sub. I think the only thing he's not subbing out of is pro. I believe that. Yeah, I yeah. could. I could. That um, makes sense. But that also, I think that's also where like I don't know. They're all uh, his team's already pretty locked now. Yeah, I guess. I guess whatever you can make work, right? With scheduling. Sure. But anyway, uh, Lotus Knight coming in. I do want to kind of berate my buddy Lotus Knight for uh, subbing in against my team. Uh, you know, shame on you, Lotus Knight. I love you, <laughs> but like, come on, man. What are you doing. Um, He's... But I, I, I get it. I do get it. You know, he's coming in to help his friends. Uh, I'm, of course, going to be taking on Based. And I'm not going to lie. It's like a little, I'm a little bummed out that I'm having such a great run in Legacy right now. And I have to face somebody who is cracked at the two seed mm -hmm. and is absolutely killing it this season. But to be fair, she normally is killing it. So mm -hmm. can't pretend to be surprised by that. Yes. Um, then, of course, we've got Raptor. Uh, one of the newest additions to THL this season. Uh, it's, he's having a pretty interesting rookie season um, at 4-4 four and four right now, and he's got to end his regular season going up against the 8-0 and o Diamond. The, the so, last... Yeah. The last remaining undefeated player who has played it, eight matches. <laughs> exactly. So... so it's, it's, it's crazy, because... Uh, I, I really want to see at least one of us get an upset this week to really help us win because mm -hmm. I feel I feel good about Earl uh, taking down Lotus Knight. I definitely think he can pull it off. Um, I'm very worried about Biz though uh, losing to losing to you. <laughs> so I'm really counting on myself and Raptor to uh, to pick things up. Um, I am gonna and uh, however for the sake of pulling I'm gonna pull the same. Well, same thing I did last week, which is I'm every, gonna do a clause. Every, yeah. Everybody but me wins. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, no question there. I because Ace has beat me once before. I I won't be surprised if she beats. Me. I I think. I'm I'm so proud of I'm so happy for my team that we're not just taking the week off. Like we are all prepping. We're all getting ready. Like we're sitting at 144 points. Like technically we could, like. We don't are yeah 143 at the start, but at the same time, you know, I think that this is an important week for both of obviously for both of our teams. Um, yeah, Lotus coming in. I mean, I I have teamed with Lotus Knight in Legacy before. Uh, he was on or I have it. I captained him. He was on a team that I captained, and it, it's a it's a joy to get to work with Lotus Knight whenever I get to uh, both in content and in playing. Um, mm -hmm. Diamond is having a very very good season um yeah it's crazy because Corden and him started pretty far apart in pr this season and Cor and diamonds now are our, our three seed uh and like he's got the ability to play in the two seed um just he doesn't have the pr his pr has always been pretty low uh but he's gotten much he's gotten so good at the game um you, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm excited to play Biz. I haven't gotten to play him before. Um, so, you know, it's going to be a good one between us. Um, I think... I think realistically our team is probably, besides the one seed, our team is probably, is probably favored on paper, but we'll see how it plays out. Exactly. Yeah, like realistically diamond should beat raptor but um you know it's not guaranteed based versus you is a very close match uh like record wise it's so misleading that base is like just base and edgy being 550 pr they're both like it's over like base is over 700 true pr just like insane player um yep. but I I don't I don't know I'm I'm excited I'm excited to see how everything plays out this week, um, and yeah I'm I'm hoping to pull out I'm hoping to pull out a positive season, um it's been really up and down in legacy for me it feels like I was gonna um, say you you and I have had a opposing like we've had strong we've had one series going pretty solidly yeah. and then one season one series that's been like uh pretty, very even pretty even yeah yeah. For sure. So, so I, get that. I, you know, I, I think an uh, unbiased look uh, would definitely be good. We'll, we'll try to be pretty fast for the rest of this, right. uh, for the rest um, of the episode. Uh, Comp, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, you had, yeah. you had... No, I, I think going quickly is 
Well, just like as an unbiased observer, um, yeah. I'm kind of rooting for IDK. Like you guys, yeah. are coming up, you know, like you have the momentum. You know, um, you got the the first win this week, which is awesome. You Ugh. beat us last week, jerks. Yeah. Uh, hard fought, well fought. Um, uh, I do think you know for sure, Clown's Academy. It's hard to to root against them. You know, like right. even with Lotus Knight um, subbing in, base thing, base thing. You know, like she's awesome. Like I, I do think they'll probably pull out the win, unfortunately, but but I'm rooting for you guys. I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. I mean, look, we're thinking about this as if we get a big win this week, then at least we can say we really fought for our playoff spot. Yes. You know, we really we really fought to make sure we had it because last season uh, we only barely made it because our competition took a big loss at the very end, um, and we were very frustrated because we were glad to make it, but we also really didn't want it to come down to an unlikely occurrence. It was... Um, yeah. I think it was Ron Mexico got swept. Oh, and, oh yeah, 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 yeah. We had, like, yeah, yeah. It, our team, our team needed our players to just not get swept, and we would have had the points. Um, but Ron got swept, and so we had no chance. No, I, I wouldn't complain about a five four. I think, uh, yeah, it's, this is a oh for IDK for for record. Yeah, I, I think that this is a really good. I mean, I, I think that this. I think that this. I want us to make that. I yeah, want to make I've it won. after so many seasons sure. of, in a row. Of, of just, yeah, after like several seasons of getting so close. Yeah. I really just, I want to keep that momentum going from last season. Definitely. So, yeah, hopefully we can help you guys crossed. out this week. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you. All right, let's go on to the next one, shall we? Yeah, uh, so, uh, so let's talk about KS3 versus Everyone's a Winner. Um, and yeah, as as we talked about, you know, Chaos Theory is like sitting pretty damn close to to Dad Legend. There's four points between them, so it's you know like they're they're gonna root it mm-hmm. and like fight it out for the four seed. Um, in red, um, let's see. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I I think there's a off chance that everyone's a winner can can come come back and you know like put up a big win. But I'm I'm actually gonna root for Chaos Theory this week and and assume that they're going to go pull out the win and then pull out the 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 playoff seed um you know when all said and done um i think lawful dog is going to beat out yo daddy um icicle i'll just try to go super fast um icicles versus jordan same um you know i think probably like uh anubinator versus chewy again chewy is such a great player um it, it's hard to root against them um Ryzen, I think, is gonna pull out the win versus Ninjapple, and I'm gonna say Tom Carter. So I'm gonna say 4-1 KS Theory um, with Tom Carter beating out um, Kodamora. And I, I'm gonna say that KS Theory is gonna eke out the uh, the playoff uh, mm-hmm. berth. What do you guys think? Um, I think Chaos Theory is barely gonna get there. Um, I I think. They're actually similar to my team in that they've, uh, they've, they've. I think they did oh, make. Oh God! A this team is the ultimate bubble team. God. Well, I would say they're tied with us as being. The yeah, but your team made playoffs last season. Yeah, but we've also bubbled about the same. I know the you same have. Amount of times I know you have. Them. I know you have. Like, like the the crazy part is though. Um, I would say that we're my team was the only. T- my team has had every time we bubbled, it was like we were kind of always doing pretty solidly all the way yeah. through. Um, but. Chaos Theory has had seasons where, like, they were starting off strong, kind of fell off, and then just barely missed it at the end. Um, like, they've had others where they've been, like, it's very close, and, like, they just barely missed it. It's like, uh Yeah. Yeah. It's... Yeah. It's, uh... It, but I think this season, like, this is arguably the the best... Uh, roster they've had lined up, and I mean, looking at it from top to bottom, it's like, wait, Chewie's in the three? What? Um, but also, like, Risen in the four is pretty solid. Uh, Lawful Dog at the one. And of course, your boy Isocles in the, the team captain in the two. Um, but that's not to say uh, everyone's a winner isn't a strong team in their right. Uh, you know, they've got some pretty, recognizable, some pretty recognizable players, some strong names. Like Yo Daddy, Anubinator, Tom Carter, uh, I I think they're uh, you know they could give them a good run for their money, but frankly, I think this is just between Lawful Dog, Isocles, and Kodamore. I think they're going to take this. 
two at the very least. So um, I- I'm rooting for them. I feel like they got a real shot, and I hope that they carry that momentum. So, um, I think this is a very this is a close one. I think the top two for chaos there. I think it leans towards them. Lawful versus Yo Daddy, and Isocles versus Jordan MG. Um, I I'm good friends with Jordan. Um, and and he's you know he's had he's kind of had an up and down kind of a. I think he had a pretty good start and then he's kind of fizzled out to uh, by the end of the season. Um, I think. I. I think um, Chewy versus Nub, a Nubinator is very close, but I'm gonna say Nubs Nubs gets the win. I'm gonna root for my friend and my and my wild teammate, uh, Risen versus Ninjapple. Um, very close one. I don't know much about Ninjapple. Um, I know quite a bit about Risen as he and I have faced a few times now. Um, and I'm gonna say that uh, I'm gonna vote for Ninjapple. And I'm going to say that Tom wins. I think it's going to go to... Ev- I think everyone's a winner can get the weak win. And I think that denies Chaos Theory playoffs again. Unfortunately, because of... Uh, I think I think Dad Legend gets enough points against F2L to, to kind of get in that... To kind of get the win. Um, I mean, it could also be... If, if F2L White actually just from here wins out, because it's one-to-one in matches, if they win the rest of the three... Then that would be right. really bad for Dad Legend, but I think uh, I think everyone's a winner has a good has a good chance if they and, and and they can take it. They're all they're they're strong players. A couple of them are in their first le- season in Legacy, and to see them having like five hundred records is, is against playing in like seeds where they have to go up against sometimes like two hundred PR above them it is very good to see them playing well. Yeah. So, see how that one plays out. We've got one more match on the docket. We've got Silver Conference. Uh, I have picked All Points Matter versus Hearthstone Academy. Um, so matchups we have Avi, we have Avi versus Hockey Boys. We have GC10 versus Ron Mexico. The Chosen Pie versus the Big Ted. Um, Tusar Mako versus Chewbacca, and we have Laughing Frog versus Charup. Um. Very interesting um, a matchup here. Um, APM, it, I think APM does, I think uh, Chosen Pi won over Ted. It's just not updated on my screenshot because when I looked at the standings, it looks like it was a, f- a three to one Double for, for Pi. So that one, we already have that one. Uh, we have that figured out. Thank you, Bone Masher. Because that's Red Conference, right? That's uh, Silver, and it silver. it is a three one for Chosen by. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Um, I see it. So yeah, from so we have you know just a set of we just have um four matches to look at. Avi versus Hockey Boys. Um, I I think Hockey Boys can pull the upset here over Avi. Um, I yeah. think I think Ron. Over, I think Ron versus Cheesy Ron's def, he his PR has dropped a lot with some poor poor seasons. Do not let that 482 PR or 492 PR fool you. He is a 550 PR player. Um, I think Ron takes it over Cheesy Town. Um, and Mako versus Shu, I think goes to Mako. He's having a very strong season. Um, even though she was also having a great season at six and two, um, I, I'm re- I'm gonna pull for Mako and then Laughing Frog versus Charup. Um, Charup hasn't necessarily had the best back half of his season. Um, I think Laughing Frog takes it in the five, so I think it goes three to two for APM. But HSA gets the top two wins in the top two. Yeah, I like that a lot in general. I feel like uh, Hockey Boys is um, like it's always hard to root against them, even though Avi's you know like also an amazing player. So I, I think I'd eke out the the upset for Hockey. Um, I agree with Ron a thousand percent. As much as Cheesy's like amazing, um, it's like you know hard to root against either of them. 
but I, I'll go with the upset, or I'll go with the, with Ron beating out Cheesy, um, and then I would go lean towards Shibaka versus Mako, and kind of basically the same, and um, chair up over Laughing Frog. So actually, maybe um, I might give the slight edge to Hearthstone Academy this week, three two. Yeah. I'm I'm torn on this because I feel like all of these matches could go either way. But I think for the sake of simplicity and because I don't want to take up too much time, I'm gonna say uh I'm gonna be going with like who I think is more favored on paper. Okay. So I'm gonna say a- Avi wins in the one. Um although I will just say Avi versus hockey is like that's such old, an awesome that's clash of like Old, exactly. Old yeah. school THL players. Um, like hockey, Avi joined like shortly after uh, I joined THL. Hockey was already there when I joined. Uh, hockey, I will always remember as being um, the person I had to beat to guarantee my team's playoffs at the very end of Legacy. So that was, that was pretty fun. Um, I'm going to say Ron does take it over Cheesy. Uh, Shu takes it over Mako, Laughing Frog over Cherub. Mm-hmm. So I do think it's going to be a 3-2 APM. Nice. Um, I also think it would be pretty cool to see uh, Bone Masher get all three of his team's uh, standard series make it in yeah. uh, playoffs. Four if you count APM Yang, which is also possible. <laughs> um, but it's also interesting how three of, his four t- three of those four teams are looking like they're going to make playoffs, not technically. So, um, obviously, yeah. AP is the only one that's actually at them. Yeah. All right. Some good thoughts. Uh, some great matches to be played. Um, yeah, that's that's all we got for matches for this evening. We're gonna head back to the main screen. We have. Uh, I do not have that many matches actually um, confirmed. Uh, I can give the uh, Discord channel a check, but I know the only one that I know for sure is my co-host to my yeah my my co-host next to me, Jr. Jugger. <laughs> Sorry, I I was trying to do pointing on my screen on the stream if you can see. Um, Jr. versus Mick in Hero Series um, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. That'll happen right after Wild and Out, um, which. Is the which is our wild series show tomorrow yep. night, uh, Thursday nights, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Myself, Marty B, and guests will be talking about wild series. Um, yes, so uh, keep in mind next week, especially, we really want to make sure we get a lot of. Um, mm-hmm. We really want to get a lot of matches on stream. Yeah. Um, we, as we get to yeah. playoffs, uh, we try to have as many matches on stream as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the farther we get, the more matches we want to make sure to, in fact, get on stream. Indeed. Um, we also want to remind you all, though, that uh, when it comes to, like, another incentive to do this is the fact that, um, as Donde has pointed out, uh, there are going to be spots in our big, oh, like, March Madness, Madness. Uh, turn- tournament yeah. um, for those who appear on stream the most. So if you didn't have enough incentive to do so already, yeah, I think uh, that should give you, you know, that should be enough by itself. For sure. Um, so yeah, we have one more match as well besides that one confirmed, which is uh, Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. We have your mum kid versus jammies in Hero. So that's another great match. That's that'll hype. be on stream. Um, so we talked about that one. That's no pros here versus APM Yang, which is important. So um, I, that's all the confirmed matches I have. Um, that's seems like that's gonna do it for all the information I have to give out to everybody. Um, make sure to be keeping up. Although just obviously be keeping up with announcements on the disc on the. Discord content announcements as well as events. Yep. Um, keep in mind, of course, next week we will be talking about uh, we'll be making our official playoff predictions as far as what the matches, how the matches are going to go, um, and we will also be discussing both 
uh, especially for Legacy, we'll be talking about the teams that are going to be playing next week, as well as the teams that made it in the uh, that made it uh, in as buys. Uh, so there's going to be plenty to talk about content wise. Um, and obviously, if you want to find out more about how some of these matches play out and talk about the inner details of that, Hearth Center will be discussing these next Tuesday. So yes. be sure to always check that out if you're looking to find out more about the actual match outcome, since we will not be discussing those in as much detail uh, on our show. All right. Uh, so we want to thank you all for tuning in tonight. Uh, as we said, the, as sorry, as Fish said, there is going to be Wild and Out tomorrow night. Um, followed by my match with Mick. Uh, I don't know if he is still watching, but if he is, Mick, I'm looking forward to playing you. We're going to have a fun match, uh, a gentleman's game, as you will. Um, hopefully, I can end my regular season uh, in Hero on a high note, but worst case scenario, uh, I just aim to go for a rematch against him. Uh, <laughs> in playoffs. So at least yeah. I don't have that on my shoulders at the moment. For sure. Um, we also want a special thank you to Comp for joining us today on such short notice and for uh, being a fantastic co-host as we expected. Thank you, Comp, for showing up tonight. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Can't wait. This is like my favorite week in THL, right? The, the last week. Yeah, last week is always great. Yeah, because because uh, it's like we always have the most things we can discuss. Like we all, we talk about how like as the season progresses more and more, uh, there's more things we can actually discuss as far as uh, where teams are. Uh, how teams are performing, what we expect uh, the playoff picture to look like, etc. So, you know, definitely, definitely glad uh, you got to be a part of that. Um, but again, thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you all next week. And, you know, in the meantime, take care of yourselves and have a fantastic weekend. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Bye, everyone.